Good afternoon and welcome to another Angry Alien Bulletin. Today we're going to be talking about alien megastructures again, but this time in regards to alien megastructures that may exist orbiting pulsars, something that we have never really seriously looked for, even though a pulsar would be an excellent source of enormous amounts of energy to a highly advanced alien civilization. And believe it or not, NASA has recently recently detected something in orbit around a number of especially powerful pulsars that so far has escaped all natural explanation, but there could be a very good artificial explanation called a pulsar ring. All this and more coming at you on The Angry Astronaut right now. Good afternoon, and once again, welcome to another Angry Alien Bulletin. Today, I'm going to be quoting extensively from a paper entitled, Are the Dyson Rings Around Pulsars Detectable? And this was written by a Dr. Osmanov, who wrote quite a bit about Dyson spheres and also Kardashev civilizations. Now, I think we all know what Dyson spheres are, but just in case you don't, it is a sphere of of material that is absorbent, in other words, some sort of solar panel or something that will absorb solar energy. That sphere completely encases a star and consumes all of its energy for use by a very advanced civilization. And how much energy are we talking about from a civilization that actually pulls something like that off? Well, we are talking about a hundred trillion times the power that our civilization currently produces. So yeah, a hell of a lot of energy. But it also requires an enormous amount of material to completely encase a star. But what Dr. Osmanov argued is that a Dyson sphere would be far more efficient if it was placed to absorb an enormous amount of energy from a far more limited region of space. In other words, if a star was pulsing out most or all of its energy in one or two particular directions, then you could simply utilize two sizable megastructures or a ring in order to completely absorb or absorb the vast majority of the energy that that star produces. And what sort of star pulses its energy in one or two particular directions? Well, you're right, it's a pulsar incredibly rapidly spinning remnants of a neutron star that pulses out enormous amounts of energy. So much energy that some of these objects can actually be detected in entirely different galaxies. That being the case then, how would you actually take advantage of the energy being generated by a pulsar? Because it's not solar energy, not the same type of energy that a Dyson sphere would take advantage of. And also, why would an alien civilization go through the, all the effort of traveling all the way to a pulsar, especially if they didn't originally evolve there? Well, first of all, let's go ahead and talk about the method. Now, first of all, instead of using solar panels or anything that absorbs heat or solar energy, you would instead need a material that absorbs electromagnetic radiation and converts that into energy. And this is not beyond the realm of possibility. We've actually been experimenting with materials like that for several decades. Although definitely a lot of progress needs to be made in the future, it's not beyond the realm of even our technology to think that a material like that could exist. But the advantage that we're talking about here is the fact that you can absorb enormous amounts of energy from a pulsar. The pulsar that lurks at the center of the Crab Nebula, for example, which is a pretty typical ordinary pulsar, generates five times 10 to the 38th power ergs per second. That's 100,000 times the luminosity of the sun enormous amounts of energy and it can be consumed by a relatively small amount of material assuming of course that material can actually absorb all of that energy but even if it only absorbs 
1% of the energy that the pulsar is pumping out, that's still a thousand times more energy than the sun. And you are getting that energy out of far less material. Let me try to explain. If you were, for example, to build a pulsar ring around the pulsar that exists at the center of the Crab Nebula, you would only have to put it about one-tenth of an astronomical unit away from the pulsar in order for the ring to receive the same amount of heat energy as our Earth receives at a distance of one astronomical unit. So you're talking 10 times closer to the pulsar than our planet is to the sun, and that would would actually be the equivalent of the habitable zone, at least as far as temperature is concerned, meaning that you could build a habitable pulsar ring as long as you could absorb the radiation anyway, and it would be the same temperature, the whole environment as the temperature that we experience here. So it would be a habitable structure, first of all, and again, absorbing enormous amounts of energy, and it could definitely be built with substantially less material than the planet Mercury is comprised out of, as opposed to a Dyson sphere, which might not even be possible if we did dismantle every planet in the solar system in order to build it. Of course, that all depends on how far away we put it from the sun, but if you want the Dyson Sphere to be habitable, you have to put it a full astronomical unit away from the sun in order to get the temperature right. With pulsars, they can be 10 times closer, and they don't have to be an entire sphere, but rather just a ring, and they're absorbing at least a thousand times the energy that a Dyson Sphere would. Sounds like kind of a winning combination, really, and a powerful inducement for an extremely advanced civilization to migrate all the way to a nearby pulsar to colonize it and build one of these megastructures if they wanted to support a rapidly expanding and power-hungry civilization. And just to be clear, Asimov is not suggesting that an alien civilization that would build a pulsar ring would be the same alien civilization that had built their civilization in that solar system prior to the pulsar becoming a pulsar. In other words, they survived the supernova that created the pulsar and then just came back to build the pulsar ring. Although in theory, maybe something like that would happen. The types of stars that create pulsars, very large, heavy stars that produce supernovas, generally a civilization doesn't want to get anywhere near a star like that until after the supernova is completed. That having been said, how do we look for pulsar rings? What would we be looking for? Well, first of all, a pulsar ring would have a very low albedo. It would be extremely dark, although it would blot out the light from the pulsar at least partially. So what we would look for is something that is obstructing the light from a pulsar to some degree, something very dark and something that doesn't correspond to a brown dwarf or a very large planet or something else else that would also obstruct the pulsar's light. What else? Well, a ring like this should give off a tremendous amount of energy in the infrared. The ring would absorb the radiation and then it would have to bleed off the excess heat in the infrared spectrum. So we would expect to identify such a structure by the infrared signature that it gives off. However, a problem with this is distance. If the structure is located any further than a kiloparsec away, or a little over 3,000 light years, even our best infrared telescopes are not going to be able to pick up a structure like this. Something this small, relatively small anyway, something this thin and slender, and something that far away would be very tough to detect with our current infrared telescopes. A better UV telescope might have a better chance of detecting something like that at a more significant distance, but we don't have telescopes that advance currently. Now, what about much more powerful pulsars? In other words, pulsars that rotate far more swiftly than the one that's at the center of the Crab Nebula. These are also called millisecond pulsars. Well, these things give off enormous amounts of energy, even compared to most pulsars. And harvesting 
this kind of energy would be something that an extremely advanced galaxy-spanning civilization might be able to make a great deal of use of. We're talking about enough energy to propel millions and millions of tons to virtually every star in the galaxy at substantial percentages of the speed of light, thousands and thousands of times more energy than even ordinary pulsars generate. But here's the problem. Given that the amount of radiation that these kinds of pulsars emit, you would have to build your structure at least 10 astronomical units or nearly the orbit of Saturn in order to keep it within a normal temperature range or a habitable temperature range that is. So something that enormous, even a ring, would definitely consume far more material than all the planets that exist inside our solar system. Not very practical, therefore not necessarily great candidates to look for. But once again, we are assuming that we're talking about a civilization that needs a habitable ring structure, needs a temperature that's within the habitable zone because they have flesh and blood bodies just like you and me, and they need a place to live. What if that is not actually the case? What if we're talking about a super advanced machine civilization and they're not interested in a habitable structure, just a structure that can gobble up as much energy as possible? That being the case, millisecond pulsars become much better targets because they generate much, much more energy than virtually any other type of object in our universe, except perhaps for black holes. Okay, all of this is very interesting, but I said in my title that NASA may have detected some sort of pulsar ring or megastructure orbiting a pulsar. So it's just this clickbait again? Well, no. Actually, I don't do clickbait. I actually deliver on what my titles say. So here's what's been discovered. A number of millisecond pulsars, unfortunately at considerable distances, have something in the way, something that is orbiting the pulsars or something that is obstructing the energy coming from them. And whatever those objects are, they are enormous and they are very dark low albedo, again fitting what we would expect from a megastructure orbiting a pulsar. Now, the way we know that those objects are there, huge invisible masses as they are called, but once again, the reason they're invisible is because they have very low albedos, is because there are fleeting moments when these highly regular pulses, regular enough to where they're even more accurate than most of our atomic clocks, aren't exactly on time. And the reason they aren't exactly on time is because something is changing the arrival time of the light from the pulsar to us. And as near as the researchers who discovered this can determine, it's something very big and very dark that is occasionally obstructing the light. And this can't be happening because there's another star orbiting the pulsar or something like that because we should be able to see a star. So it must be a large dark object, perhaps a brown dwarf or something along those lines. But again, they seem a little too big to be those kinds of objects. And also the pattern of disruption seems different from what they would anticipate. Therefore, it is a very, very big mystery as to what's causing these strange occasional dips in light, or rather just interruption in the pattern of the pulsar's light. And even though you may think that it's far-fetched to think that it might be an alien megastructure creating this disruption, well, let me tell you what the scientific community is starting to think. They think it's dark matter. That's right, something that we have never detected, something that has never obstructed the light from anything else, that's what's obstructing the light from the pulsar. And so there are many in the scientific community who are very excited about this discovery because they're thinking that they can study these interruptions in order to determine a little bit more about the structure of dark matter. 
Again, something we've never been able to see with any other method. Now, I'm not saying that this is impossible or poorly thought out or anything, but really, there are still many astrophysicists who debate whether or not dark matter even exists even today. And if the idea of dark matter causing this disruption is something that's being explored by the scientific community, then why can we not also explore the possibility of an alien megastructure. And yet, in every single article that I've read about this discovery, dark matter is mentioned in every single one of them, but nobody dares mention the possibility of advanced technology creating this disruption. Even though there are quite a number of articles that have been out for years now that suggest that a megastructure orbiting a pulsar would be a very good idea for an advanced civilization that wants a limitless supply of energy. Now, as I mentioned before, if this is a megastructure of some kind, it should be generating a considerable amount of energy in the infrared. And up to this point, this study has only been carried out with radio telescopes. However, as I mentioned before, these are pretty distant pulsars, so we might not be able to pick up the infrared signature at this distance, regardless of whether anything is there or not. But it's certainly worth looking but I guarantee you nobody is really going to seriously look for something like this because until the scientific community actually explores an artificial explanation for mysteries like this as enthusiastically as they explore the possibility of things like dark matter, we're never going to find anything. Thank you very much for watching. Really appreciate your ongoing support. Please check the description for various ways to support this content so I can keep bringing it to you. And as always, stay angry about space.